Hi class, we're gonna do some more Wish Tree. We am rocking my Peyton Manning jersey today. So you can see the 18, he was the best. Some of you will say Elway. I didn't grow up watching Elway, I watched more Manning. So to me, I like him more, sorry. Um, so yeah, this is my favorite jersey to wear. This is my favorite hat. Um, it's kinda cool, it's gray, the blue. Um, but I like to wear it backwards. <laughs> So we're going to read Wish Tree, and hope you're all enjoying the videos and the different attire. Um, I got another jersey I'll be wearing tomorrow. Um, we left off um, kind of with a little bit of a cliffhanger um, where Red was trying to figure out like what makes friends, and then he figured, he said, um, Trees are the strong, silent type, unless we're not. So he thinks we're starting to... I'm making a prediction. I'm sure some of you are. That maybe he's not going to be silent. Maybe he's going to break the rule and talk. Let's just have to wait and see. So I'm on chapter 21. That is page 87. And let's get going. Bongo. I said early that morning as the last stars faded like weary fireflies. There's something I need you to do. Does it involve potato chips, Bongo mumbled? No, then I'd rather sleep. <laughs> it's about Samar. You'd promised you'd let me sleep in. I didn't promise, you implied. I want to grant Samar's wish. This roused Bong Bongo. She fluttered down to her favorite branch, the one she nicknamed Home Plate. Bongo likes to watch the kids play softball at the elementary school. Uh, Red, you don't make wishes happen. You're the place where wishes go. You're like a, like a leafy garbage can, in, in a good way. For 116 rings, I've sat on my roots and listened to people hope for things, and a lot of times the wishes never happened. I'm guessing. Bongo tucked a feather into place. Sometimes that's for the best. Remember that kindergartner who wanted a bulldozer? I'm passive. I just sit here watching the world. Hear a tree, Red. That's kind of your job description. This is a good wish. And it's a wish I can make happen, I paused. Well, we can make happen. Yeah, I had a feeling that's where this was going. Bongo glided to the ground. Look, I heard Samar's wish. How exactly are you going to find her a friend? You'll see, I said, hoping I sounded more confident than I felt. Red, Bongo pecked back and forth. With each step, her head bobbed forward. We've got more serious issues, pal. Francesca's talking about turning you into toothpicks, and your residents are frantic about where they're going to move if that happens. She came close and nudged me fondly. Of course they're worried about you, too. I know that. Fresh baked bread poked her head out of the under the porch. It was barely dawn, and the only white stripe running the length of her face was clearly visible. I've offered to take in one of the tree families temporarily, she announced, preferably the opossums. They're better behaved than the ewes. That's very generous of you, Fresh, I said. But I was interrupted by Big U. The <laughs> names are hard to track. The mother of the three raccoon babies. She was in my large hollow, grumbling under her breath. I beg your pardon, she explained. You, you, and you have excellent manners. They're too inquisitive, said Fresh Baked Bread, always poking their noses where they shouldn't be grabbing things with their little paws of theirs. Mm -hmm. Well, at least they don't stink, Big U cried, and your children have paws the last time I checked. Harry Spiders, the mother of Possum, peeked out cautiously from her hollow. Opossums name themselves after things they fear. Stink is the nose of the beholder, said Harry Spiders. And while I personally think your children are have a delightful order, fresh, I've already got dibs on the woodpile two doors down, should anything happen to Deer Red. She patted me. No offense, love. Just thinking ahead, you know? No offense taken, I assured her. I saw that pile first, Big U cried. Share the skunk den, Harry Spider said. I wouldn't be caught dead in that place, Big U explained. Not now. Now that I know my inquisitive children aren't wanted. Well, they are a bit boisterous, said Harry Spiders. At least my children have spunk, said Big U. Your kids fate when they see their own shadows. <laughs> Playing possum is a useful adaptation, said Harry Spiders, her pink nose twitching. The world is a dangerous place, and in any case, you can't control it. It just happens. If I may interrupt, came a cool voice from my highest branches. It was Agnes. 
There's a nice-looking linden tree two blocks away, just vacated by a gray squirrel family. We're looking at it as a possibility, but there's a tomcat that runs loose there. Collar, no bell, so that's an issue. Also, a big slobbery dog. In fairness, all dogs are slobbery, Bongo observed. I really think you should all calm down, I interrupted. Let's not buy trouble. One day at a time, my friends. Who knows what tomorrow may bring? The mothers glared at me. I heard a great deal of sighing. Too much, wise old tree, I asked. Too much, wise old tree, Bongo confirmed, as everyone retreated to their homes in a huff. They're all a bit tense, Bongo said, worried about your... your situation. I can see that. I'm worried too, Bongo said in an almost whisper. I know, I said gently. But every cloud has a silver... Red, Bongo interrupted. Sorry. There must be something I can do, Bongo said. You're a good friend, Bongo, but sometimes all you can do is stand tall and reach deep. Red! Sorry, I said again. What will I do without you, Red? Bongo said softly. You'll be fine, my friend, I promise. We both fell quiet. At last, Bongo shook herself, feathers fluttering, fluffing. In any case, maybe not the best time to be granting wishes in my point, is my point. Seems to me this is exactly the right time, I replied. Bongo groaned her little old man groan. She knew I wasn't backing down. And with that, we began to plan. So how are a bird and a tree going to grant Samar's wish to have her have a friend? Like, how are they going to get her to make a friend? Chapter 22. We ex executed plan number one an hour and a half later when Stephen head off to school. He gotten only as far as the sidewalk when Bongo drove straight toward his backpack. Poking at the zipper with her beak, she cawed frantically. When crows want to be loud, they can be extremely loud. What? Stephen cried. What is wrong with you? What is wrong with you, bird? He dropped his backpack to the ground. Bongo landed on the backpack, looking up at him hopefully. Chip, please, she said. Stephen rolled his eyes. Seriously? Hello, Bongo said. Chip, please. Stephen put his hand on his hips. Okay, fine. I've seen you in action. Work the bus line. Work in the bus line. Bongo hopped to the ground as Stephen unzipped his backpack. You rock, she said politely. Stephen pulled out his lunch bag and opened it. Let's see. I've got a tuna fish sandwich, carrot sticks, but before he could say anything more, Bongo plunged, plunged into the backpack, grabbed a sheet of paper, and flew skyward. Hey, that's my English homework, Stephen cried. Come back here, you thief. Bongo flew high into my branches and landed with a victorious caw. Stephen stalked around the bottom of my trunk, where the yellow police tape encircled me. Please, Crow, he pleaded. I'll give you my whole sandwich, please. Bongo perched on the, on the paper, freeing her beak. No way, she replied. A few minutes, more minutes of grumbling, and Stephen gave up. Great, he muttered as he grabbed his backpack. Mrs. Kellerman is never going to believe me when I tell her a crow ate my homework. All right, one more chapter. Chapter 23. It's a quick one. When Samara exited her house, it was time for the rest of our plan. She paused, as she always did, to say hello, and Bongo, as she always did, said hello back. But this time, Bongo surprised Samar by landing on her shoulder and presenting her with a mangled piece of paper. Samar took it from Bongo. This has Stephen's name on it. Why on earth do you have it? No way, Bongo said, by way of an answer. Well, I'll be sure he gets this, Samar said. Bongo gave a little claw and headed back to me. Perfect. A simple plan, beautifully executed. Samar would give the homework to Stephen. They'd strike up a conversation about the crazy crow and big one oak tree. They'd laugh, they'd share, they'd realize they have a lot in common. Voya, friendship. It was a great plan. Except for the part that came just seconds later. The part where Samar noticed a friend of Stephen's walking by. She dashed over and asked him to give Stephen the piece of paper. And that was that. Meddling isn't as easy as I thought it would be, I confessed to Bongo. Hey, I did my part. You were wonderful, I said. Well, we'll just have to try again. We don't have a lot of time. Red, Bongo said aside. Please don't remind me. Chapter 24 starts off with, that afternoon we tried plan number two. What do you think plan number two is going to be for Wish Tree? Um, and see how are Red and Bongo going to help her become 
a friend. Go Broncos. Go Manning. Go third grade.